In this video, we're going to show you how to download and install the Tor browser so that you can explore the dark web. For more information, please check out everybithelps.io. First up, a little bit about what the Tor browser is. The Tor browser is free software for enabling anonymous communication on the internet. It's designed to protect users' privacy and anonymity on the web by bouncing their communications around a distributed network of relays. This is run by volunteers all around the world. So how does Tor achieve this level of anonymity? Well, the magic lies in its unique structure. When you use the Tor browser, your internet traffic is routed through three random nodes or relays before they head to their final destination. Each relay only knows about its immediate predecessor and successor, but no others. And this ensures your anonymity. Tor Browser prevents people from knowing which websites that you visit. Some entities, such as your internet service provider, may be able to see that you're actually using Tor, but they won't know where you're going and what you're doing. When exploring the dark web, you'll often hear things about Onion websites. These websites that end in .onion are special sites only accessible through the Tor network, and they offer additional privacy for both the visitor and the website. The name Onion refers to the layers of encryption that are used to protect the data. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can download and install the Tor browser and then how to use it. The first place that you're going to need to start is heading across to the official Tor Project website, which is torproject.org. And you can do this all through your regular browser. In the top right of your screen, choose Download Tor Browser. You then have the option to download for Windows, Mac, Linux or Android. And underneath you'll see Signature, which is a file to help you ensure that the package was generated by Tor developers and that it hasn't been tampered with. So if you want to verify that the Tor browser that you download is the one that they've created and it's not been modified by some attacker, you can download this file by right-clicking the Signature link and then selecting the Save File As option. Before you verify signatures, you'll also need to install GNUPPG and type in a few different commands. And you'll find all the instructions and the links for the different operating systems on the Tor project site under support. Once downloaded and installed, when you're happy, you can launch the Tor browser. The first time you launch the browser, you're going to be asked if you want to connect directly to the Tor network or if you need to configure your connection due to your country's censorship laws. For most users, choosing Connect will allow you to connect to the Tor network without having to make any further configurations. But if you know that your connection is censored or used as a proxy, you can click on Configure Connection. And at this point, you may be able to use a bridge if Tor is blocked in your location. When you choose to connect, a status bar will appear and it's going to show you the Tor's connection progress. If you're on a relatively fast connection, but this bar does seem to get stuck at certain points, try the connection assist or take a look at their troubleshooting page to help solve the problem. But as you can see, I've now installed and updated my Tor browser. So next, let's take a look at how this works and how we can use the Tor browser. The first thing I'm going to do is search for something on DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is the default search engine in Tor Browser, which they use as DuckDuckGo doesn't track its users, nor does it store any data about any user searches. And I'm from the UK, therefore for now I'm going to search for The Guardian, which is a news publication. When I click onto guardian.com, you'll see that on the menu bar at the top of the screen here, that there's a purple suggestion box. Let me know that there is a .onion site available. So anytime there's an available .onion site, this will appear. And when we click onto it, the website will be reloaded and redirected to its Onion counterpart, which you'll see in the address bar of 56 characters long. But next, let's take a look at the rest of the browser. First, in the top left-hand side of our toolbar, like any browser, we've got our back arrow and our forward arrow, refresh or reload page icons. Next to that, we have something called the Tor Circuit icon. And the Tor Circuit shows you how you've been routed to reach this site. And in Tor Browser, every new domain gets its own circuit. So we've been routed from this browser to France, Denmark, the States, and then to the Guardian Onion site itself. 
and you can create a new tour circuit for this site too. This option is really helpful if the exit relay that you're using is unable to connect to the website that you want to reach, or if it's not loading properly. And by choosing New Circuit, a new active window will reload over a new circuit as you can see. And if you have any other open tabs and windows from the same website, it's going to use the new circuit as well once they've reloaded. Just be aware here though that this option doesn't clear any private information or unlink your activity, nor does it affect your current connections to other websites. When accessing a website that uses an Onion service, Tor Browser will show an icon of an onion displaying the state of your connection, which is secure and using an Onion service. When we click onto this, it then provides us with more information. If this icon does have a red slash through it, it means that the Onion service is served with a script from an insecure URL. And if there's an exclamation mark, it means that the Onion service is served over HTTPS with an expired certificate or a wrong domain, or with a mixed form over an insecure URL. So please just make sure that you do look out for this. You then have the address bar showing you the URL for this page. And as I mentioned, dot .onion sites are usually 56 characters long, which you can bookmark in the same way as any browser and rename and save. The shield icon here shows you your current security level, which you can edit in the settings here. From standard, safer and safest, which will vary depending on which website features are enabled. And we're gonna take a look at a few more settings shortly. Going back to the browser icons, the next, which looks a bit like a broom, allows you to reset your identity. This option is helpful if you want to prevent your subsequent browser activity from being linkable to what you were doing before. So selecting it will close all of your tabs and your windows, clear all private information such as your cookies and browsing history, and use a new Tor circuit for all the connections. Just note that all activity and downloads will be stopped, so do take this into account before you click onto new identity. And I'm just going to show you another dot onion site now, which is ProPublica, an independent non-profit newsroom that provides investigative journalism in the public interest. And again, we can view our routing from here and the connection security for this site. Let's head across to the burger icon menu, which looks like three horizontal lines in the top right. From here is where you can open new tabs, windows, Again, you can create new identity or a new tour circuit for this site. Then you can do standard browser features from here too, such as viewing your bookmarks, history, downloads, plus you can zoom and print. Under settings is where you can set Tor as your default browser. You can change some appearance or language settings and manage updates and connections. Over on the left is where you can also set privacy and security settings that we saw some of earlier. And while Tor provides a significant level of anonymity, it's essential to understand that it's not 100% foolproof. If you're thinking of exploring deeper parts of the web, especially the dark web, you still need to be cautious. And here's just some security measures that you may want to consider. First, never share any personal information. Also, you want to use end-to-end -end encryption for any communications. Avoid downloading random files. And stay sceptical approaching with a critical mind. Also, generally speaking, Tor Project doesn't recommend using a VPN with Tor unless you're an advanced user who knows how to configure both in a way that doesn't compromise your privacy. So that's how you can download and install Tor Browser to explore the dark web. If you're looking for some dark website suggestions, then please check out our video which lists our top 10 dark websites. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like hit the subscribe button and please do head over to our website at everybithelps.io for more tips, reviews and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks and I'll see you soon.